Hi, first aid people. I know you're loving it. Stay tuned because today we're going over your home first aid kit. Keeping everybody safe. That's what you do. And I'm so proud of you. Here we go. I'm Savannah from Real Rescue Life. I'm a firefighter, a first aid instructor, a business owner, but most importantly, I'm a mom. <laughs> Here at Real Rescue Life, we share home and family safety tips in hopes to grow your confidence and knowledge for a safer community. Okay, I have my fantastic assistant, Lakeland, here. Lakeland is three years old. She's hiding, but she does know where the first aid kit is. So our home first aid kit, everybody knows where it is, including our three-year-old, just in case someone has to grab it. So that's a pretty good habit. Let's start doing that, teaching our children or others just where to grab the safety supplies in case you need them. Deadly bleeding is the first thing that I wanna go over. So what we wanna have in our kit is a good amount of four by four gauze. Accompanied with that is a whole bunch of two by two gauze. Now both of these are clean and sterile dressings. As soon as you open them, they're not sterile anymore. But as long as we're not touching them with our entire hands, we should be pretty good. So those are for really big boo-boos, not so big boo-boos. And then for teeny tiny little cuts, we want to use a band-aid. So, okay. Okay, I'll snap it. Very nice. Wow. So we have a pretty good stock of band-aids. We have regular band-aids. These we would use on daddy. Okay, but if Lakeland gets a cut, which band-aids are we going to use? Mm. Hello Kitty. Make sure you have... Yeah, because I like kittens. I like kittens too. Make sure you have a bunch of really fun band-aids in there for those cuts and scrapes. This is really gonna cheer the kids up. All right, so we always like to have some fun ones in there. And then different shape band-aids. These ones, we call them for you know making turns. Have a couple different selections in there. We also add, which is an extra, is just some Q-tips just for cleaning out things if we're really digging. To go with your four by four dressings, you're gonna need something to actually attach them onto the person. So my favorite is always roller gauze, a couple different sizes of them, but other options are triangulars, which can do many other things um, other than actually apply direct pressure. And the last thing is vet wrap. Vet wrap is a fantastic tool. So we always have that in our first aid kit. If somebody suffers from a burn, we want to use a proper burn dressing. If you're curious on how to actually properly treat a burn, check out that video on our channel. Go over that in great detail for you. So this is a burn dressing, an actual nonstick burn dressing, but it also has ointment in it. So it will help take away some of that heat and pain that's happening to that person. You will not use this on a third degree burn, you'll use this on a first and second degree burn. Essential tweezers, a couple different kinds, pointy ones, thick ones, thin ones, as many different types of tweezers as you can find. Shove that in your first aid kit because we've all done some digging before for our friends. Right. Two things that are extras, but I think everybody should have it. An EpiPen, you do not need a prescription to buy an EpiPen. You can go buy one for yourself. So we have an EpiPen just in case something happens with friends, family, um, if they come over. We're only giving this to somebody if they do already have a prescription, but maybe they forgot it. So it's a known allergen, then we would use epinephrine or an EpiPen on that person. The other thing is Dex4. So what this is, is actually just fast acting glucose. If someone's having a diabetic emergency, we would try to use Dex4 to bring their sugar levels up. If that's not helping, then we're obviously gonna call for extra help to get that person stabilized. So those are our must have, our gauze, our box of band-aids, especially the Barbie ones, our roller gauze, triangular bandage, burn dressing, 
tape tweezers. It's not a crazy amount, but these are things that you should always have around ready to go in case there's an emergency. All right. And maybe a storybook if that helps. A few extras that we store in our home first aid kit. Um, it's not a must have, but just nice things. I usually gather even um, specific medicine. So if um, Lakeland gets really dry eyes, so I have her specific blink medicine in that container just so that if I need it, I know exactly where it is. Um, for that purpose, all right? So any kind of eye drops, you can have tears is a good thing. If someone actually gets something in their eye, tear, this is basically the same, um, but you can use that. After bite, again, a nice must have, um, ice pack. Easy enough for you to run to the freezer, but it is nice to have an extra ice pack in there. Thermometer, checking temperatures, making sure that everybody's okay, feeling well in the house. These two items we would use if we had a significant deadly bleed that we could not control with direct pressure and rest. So this is a hemostatic dressing and what it actually does is it clots the person's blood. So you're actually going to pack the wound um, using this. We will do an instructional video on that. Um, but yeah, so this would be for a very significant bleed. We're talking about chainsaw, uh, someone got hit by something, really, really big injuries where you can't control that bleeding or an arterial bleed is when you would use something like this. You're only going to use it on extremities. You will not use it in the center of a person's body or obviously to go inside. We're not going to do that. The other thing, a little bit more common is a tourniquet. So this is a cat tourniquet. We have it in there. Again, if rest and direct pressure isn't working, then we would move to actually applying a tourniquet. Once we apply it, we're not going to take it off. Last two things, polysporin, as we're treating injuries or as we're healing them, peroxide, again, as we're treating them after the injury has happened, you don't need to use either of these right away. Polysporin is okay initially, but you don't want to actually use peroxide right away unless it has significant germs on it, but realistically what it's going to do is start to actually kill some of the cells and those good cells that are surrounding that area. So we don't always want to use that. And then lastly, just some kid electrolytes if someone's not feeling well. Again, another fast grab and go. We have full like massive med bags that are around. That's just because we're we're just like that. Um, but basically it's because of volunteer firefighting and being in the community and kind of being one of those go-to people. So we always want to make sure that if someone needs our help, we have everything, but these are the basics. So just for your house, cottage, these would be fine. But if it was at a cottage where there's more toys, those types of things, get the extras. If you need any supplies, please reach out to us. We would love to help, ruralrescuetraining.com. Any comments, um, anything that maybe I missed that you like to have in your first aid kit, these are just the things that I always go to and that I'm used to. But maybe there's something that you love to have in your first aid kit. Give us a comment below. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. You know what to do. Or what? Just to read. And I'll read them to the photos when it's bedtime for them. Part 10, boo-boo bedtime.